So hi everyone, we are on our second week. Thank you to all of those who tapped in last week. I think we had over 300 and something hits. So that means you're actually tuning in. Um, so that's great. And I hope that this week will also be inspirational somewhat. But this week, so it's just not joy, we have some guests with us. We have Mateo, we have Mr. Sal, and we have Mr. Sebastian. And they're gonna help me with this week's topic, okay? So, I put a word on the board, and the word I put on is what? Who wants to tell me what that is? Yeah, Sebastian. Vineyard. Vineyard, right. So today we're gonna to talk about vineyards, just real quick, because that's what our gospel story has been about. We keep hearing about vineyards. And we're gonna talk a little bit how that connects to maybe 2020, maybe not 2020 all the time, 2020, but how it connects to our lives right now. So we're gonna look at the vineyard. Okay, but before we do that, do you know what we should start with? What do you think? What do we always start with? Yeah. Um, a prayer. A prayer, you're good. And he was not cued into that. So you got the answer, <laughs> Sebastian, okay. So you ready to pray, just real quick with me? Okay, let's start. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen? Amen. So dear Lord, thank you for my guest today. Thank you for Sebastian. Thank you for Sal. Thank you for Mateo. And for our other guests that we will have coming in. We ask you to watch over us, to continue to bless our families as they continue to lead their children closer to you. Help us, Lord, to grow in our faith, to learn more about you, and to strengthen our spirits in this time of COVID. And for anyone today, especially Lord, who may need a prayer, who's reached out to us and asked for help, um, we remember them especially, Lord. And bless our session here, Lord. We ask all things through your name. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, so you told me that a vineyard was... I said vineyard. What is a vineyard? Can you tell me real quick? Well, yeah, Sal. Yeah. So. Grapes. Grapes. You grow grapes in a vineyard, right? Okay, so it was a business where they grew grapes. All right, and it was a big deal back in Jesus' time with these grapes. Okay, so why do you think he's talking about a vineyard? Why don't you want to talk about a vineyard? What do you think? Hmm. I've got to give you the answer. Ready? He's talking about a vineyard because it was a place everybody could relate to. Everybody knew what a vineyard was back in Jesus' time, all right? So maybe we could compare it to a small business now, all right? So you know what a business is, right? So somebody owns a business or a restaurant, and people work there. And by working there, the people who work there make money so they can feed their families. And the person who owns the restaurant, by having people work for them, they can make money to feed their families. Make sense? Yes? Yeah. No? Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay. So it was like a business, and that was important. But everybody had to work together. Because if you didn't work together, what do you think would happen? Yeah, so, I mean, Sebastian. You wouldn't grow grapes. You wouldn't grow grapes. If you didn't do it, yeah, go ahead, Sal. They get torn apart, like yelling, screaming, like, I want to do that. I want to do this. Say that really loud. That was great. Like yelling and screaming and, like, I want to do this. I want to do that. So if they don't work together, everybody's fighting, right? Yeah. So it's important to work together. Absolutely. What do you think, Mateo? That, like... <laughs> Any ideas with it? Okay, you got to work together. You agree with that? And if you work together, good things can happen. Can we agree to that? Yes? Okay, so in this particular thing, people, everyone, families... The vineyard God's talking about is his kingdom here on earth, okay? Because God is with us now. It's not like he's up there or he's over there. He's with us right now. And we all need to work together. And by working together, good things can happen. Do you agree with that? If we all work together, good things can happen? Okay. So I have two guests I want to bring in, okay, who work for God, who also work so that we can have a better world, all right? And so that God's message can get through, okay? So let's see if you know who these guys are, all right? So first I'm gonna introduce Father Tom. Do you know who he is? I just said his name. That's Father Tom. Okay, what is he here? Do you know what he does? What do I do? Sal, go. He's a priest. He's a priest. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna bring someone else in. You wanna come in? This guy's new. Do you know who this is? Yeah. yeah. 
Father Martin. Father Martin just came with us. He just came in September. But they're priests, okay? So why don't you just briefly, maybe take your turn, but just to tell us how you do God's work, what you think your job is. Okay. So um, I'm no here. No pressure. <laughs> so Joy told you about the vineyard, which is really interesting, really interesting. Uh, and Jesus talked about the vineyard. And sometimes they actually call church people workers in the vineyard. And the vineyard is the church and the people of God. And we kind of work in the vineyard. So it's a little bit of a symbolic uh, uh, message there. So um, I work with the people of our parish. I'm the pastor here at Notre Dame, and we have all kinds of parishioners here, young guys like you, and older folk, <laughs> and everyone in between. And they all want to know Jesus, right? They want to meet Jesus. So the work we do is talk about the Bible and preaching, and we do sacraments like uh, First Communion, right? You guys all received First Communion? Yes? Was good, right? See? <laughs> and... Uh, we do weddings and sometimes funerals too, right? So those are important moments in people's lives. Was your first communion important to you? Yeah, it was, right? You'll probably remember it forever. I remember my first communion. It was a long time ago, but it was such a special day that you never forget that. And what made it most special was that you got to experience the presence of Jesus. Just like Joy said, God is with us all the time. And that's one of the ways that we encounter him. So maybe that, I'll stop talking and give Father Martin a chance, but maybe that's ultimately what we do. We try to help people to find that God really is with them all the time. Yeah, I'm Father Martin, new guy here in Notre Dame, just starting to work here, four weeks I think. And I'm trying to work with you guys, because as Father Tom said, there's like a huge vineyard. We are just together working, we are just together trying to do something nice, something good for, for God and for ourselves. And I hope we can, we can work together, we can make our lives better. Younger, you know, the teenagers, the, the parents, older ones, priests, whatever. And we are together building some, some, something nice, something great, what God is expected. And I hope we can each and we can know each other, each uh, other, you know, more, and we can spend nice time together in Notre Dame in North Colbert, okay? So now I have a question, because Sal, I'm going back to you for a second, okay? What happens when people don't work together? They fight. They fight. Do you think anything good comes out of us fighting and not working together? No. No. What do you think, Sebastian? No. No. Mateo? Okay. So Father Tom said if we all work together, right, that we're working together and if we are all helping each other and doing things together, good things can happen, right? Okay, so now I'm going to pick on you, Mateo. Are you ready? Okay, so do you think you have to be Father Tom's age to do good things? No. Do you think you have to be Father Martin's age to do good things? No. Okay, I'll say me, but I'm older than Father Tom. <laughs> do you think you have to be my age to do good things? No. no. Do you think you can do good things at your age? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Mateo. Last, was it Christmas? Was it around Christmas? You were in the city, right? Mm. Okay, so Mateo has a story, a quick story to share with us. So you were in the city with your family. Mm. Can you tell me briefly what happened quickly? So I was walking and we passed this homeless person and I wanted to give him a blanket. And whose blanket did you take? Mine. You took your blanket. And did you make your mom go back and give him the blanket? I, I did. You went back and gave it to him. What did you say to your mom? Do you remember, Mateo? No. I think if your mom kind of, I'll paraphrase it because I'm not going to use the exact words, but I think it's good for our families to know that a lot of times our great ideas can come from our kids, right? I think parents will know that. Sometimes our kids are the ones to inspire us. But you basically saw the man was homeless, and you said to your mom, Mom, I want to give him my blanket. And you made your mom go back and give him the blanket, right? Okay. Then what happened out of that idea? Do you remember? Mm. No. You don't? Okay, so can I tell the rest of the story? Yeah. Okay. So your mom called me, and she asked me, could we do a blanket drive? 
right? Because you came up with the idea that this man should not be cold, that he needed a blanket. And so we ended up doing a blanket drive here at Notre Dame. And I know that all your families were involved, all right? And we collected probably, you have a van, right? Because you have a big van. The whole back of their van was filled with blankets. And that idea of doing this came out of Mateo just saying innocently to his mom, he saw somebody in need and he gave him a blanket. And then he put the idea in his mom's head. His mom called me. And then I put the idea in everybody else's head. And then all of a sudden we had all these blankets. And all the blankets went into the city, right? You drove them into the city with your family. And they got distributed to people who needed them in a real cold time of year. Right, Mateo? So my point is that you don't have to be Father Tom. You don't have to be Father Martin. You don't have to be Joy. You don't even have to be Mom and Dad. But the fact that you thought about helping someone else, Mateo, I'm just picking on you now because I know I'm sure these guys have done great things too. The fact you thought about helping someone else makes you a worker in the vineyard. You did God's work that day just by helping someone because you saw someone in need. And that's kind of what we're all called to do as workers. It's not just saying we believe, but how do our actions fit into it? And your actions of just saying, hey, mom, he needs a blanket. Take my blanket and give it to him. Then led to everybody else. It was a great idea. You had a good idea. Everybody else came together and said, you know what, Mateo's right. Let's get blankets. And they all went into the city and they all helped. So you were an example of what Father Tom was talking about, of being a worker in the vineyard. And just your little thought kind of spread. And I'm sure you guys can think of other ways that you can help people. But by you doing it, you become Jesus' voice for people who need help. Right? And Father Tom was right. All three of these guys all just received First Communion. So more and more as you get to know Jesus and you become, right, you continue to follow him, you'll be doing really great things like you already are. Okay. Are we good? Yes. Okay, so just some housekeeping things. Um, just parents real quick. I just want to go over the books real fast because there were questions last week. So Promise is for grade one. Seeds is for grade pre-K to K. If you have a second to fifth grader, so that would be these guys, they're doing good news. And six to eight is doing venture. All right, those are the ones. And hopefully after you finish this video, or when your family is able to, at least be able to go over the gospel stories, because that'll be important, because it'll feed off of what we did here today. And the idea today is that we're all called, right, to be workers in the vineyard, right? in very powerful ways. Okay. At 115 today, there will be an animal blessing. It'll be a drive through So I know you don't have a dog yet, but so we got to ask St. Francis, maybe you can go sell, right? At some point, I know mom and dad are getting in trouble for that, but sell would like a puppy, just put it out. Okay, and um, so you can, you can drive through with your animals, and Father Martin and Father Tom <laughs> will be there to bless them. Okay, and if you put your animal's name on your dash, then we'll be able to know your animal's name. Okay, so that's going to happen today at 1.15, and we'll go from 1.15 to 2.15. Okay, and we're doing that because today's St. Francis, and St. Francis was definitely a worker in the vineyard, and he helped all God's creatures because he knew we were all connected. Okay, all right, you ready for a closing prayer? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to pray the prayer of St. Francis since we're going to bless the animals today. Okay? All right. So you ready? Yes? 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 yes. Ready? <laughs> okay, here we go. So, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, the people are hurting, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. 
Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you to my guests. Thank you to you. Great three guys. You were really great. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday.